Hello there, good day, and welcome back. So, before we jump into this new chapter, we just finished um, chapter 5 on maps. Um, remember um, that this week I'm still on vacation, and again, you might hear some noises in the background, birds and so on. Um, besides that, um, there may not be another video until I return from vacation. And so that is looking like if the next video might be um, um, February on the 20th, so next Monday. Um, I'll try to upload a video before then, but things are going to get hectic in these last few days while I'm on vacation. And um, I really doubt that I'll have the time to create a video, but I will certainly try. A uh, number of these videos were recorded, but not this one. Um, before I went on vacation, because I know so while I was on vacation, I would be busy. And some were recorded um, while I was on vacation, but uh, it is a lot to record for two channels, um, you know, two playlists. I have the Go Lang programming um, series and the web development series, which I'm winding up, but or winding down, um, right now, not winding down, uh, not winding up, well, winding down. So anyway, let's talk about um, struts. So we've covered so far. Um, in a previous chapter, maps, which we saw was a data type that allows you to um, maintain a collection of values. And we, the nice thing there was the benefit of how flexible your index type was. And before that, we did arrays. And before that, we did some other basic data types. So what are struts? So if you go to the language specification for, you know, go lane, you can read up on what structs are here. I'm going to go over that description that they have on their page. I copy it blatantly. And then we'll review a little bit and try and get our bearings by kind of looking back at what RA slash sizes are, how they differ from maps, and then how maps are different from structs. And then we'll try and look at some you know, example usage of um, using structs. All right. So here's the description that Google put in their documentation. A struct is a sequence of named elements, okay? So your elements, you think in individual things, okay? But these are named elements. Whereas in an array, your elements are not named, they're indexed. And you use the number zero and so on to get at each element. In a map, you have elements also, but you um, use keys or string or index or, or whatever. So you, you have values to as your index to get into them, but still they're not necessarily named. When you use a string, you might want to think of it as a name for that element, but uh, you don't want to think of it that way. You just want to think of it as an index and you're using a string. And you can use um, floats, you can use you know integer. Uh, it wouldn't make sense to use Boolean because there are only two possible values you can use. So that just give you a struct with like two keys. But anyway, you get the idea. We played with maps already. So here in a struct, your elements can have names so you can assign names to those elements it's still a composition of different values you're maintaining um, composition of elements but then here we can name them and we're going to see that a little bit just now and uh, what we call those are fields so those named elements we call them fields each of which has a name and a type what we did set it to the elements i'm um, going to be named and the name you, for those elements are going to be called field and so field must have a name and um, a certain type okay um, field names may be specified explicitly, which we call them an identifier list, because the field names look like identifiers. Identifiers, if you don't remember, are like your variable names, the things, or function names, those things you use to identify other things, or constant, right? Um, those are all identifiers. Or implicitly, when you have anonymous fields. We're not really going to talk about anonymous field in this first video, but we'll get to it in subsequent videos when we, in this chapter. Within a struct, none Blank names must be unique. Well, if you know, if, if this makes sense, if I have elements that I'm giving name to, I can't have two elements with the exact same name. How will I differentiate them? So uh, that kind of makes sense. So let's see. So when we were talking about an array, uh, what we had, we had um, a set of elements, and the value for the element could be pretty much anything, right? It could be Boolean, it could be string, blah, blah, blah. So we had flexibility in the element type. Right, but the index or you get to each one of them or you find one was fixed. You always had to use an integer, and of course, it started with zero. Okay, 
So, and then we had this thing of a fixed boundary. Not that they say a bad thing. Even when you use a slice, remember a slice was represented by referencing an array. So even a slice had a fixed boundary. Sure, you can grow it, but there's still this idea of a fixed boundary to it. And again, like I can mention previously, you had the um, index, the integer uh, I use as index. All elements of this array must have the same types. If I create an array of strings, every element is a string. Can be anything else. Okay, can mix match and have the first element be a string, the second one be an integer, and all that sort of stuff. Okay, it doesn't work that way in Go or statically typed language. Okay, um, when we went to a map, the flexibility there was we still had these elements and they can be of all these different types, you know, just like you can have an array or slice of strings, or you can have a map of strings also. But no, we can index things not just with integer, but with any other type. Almost any other thing. We can't use function, maps, array as keys, but we could use any other basic type like float, integer, string. And here's an example where my key, or what I'm using for indexing, is a string. So I have November as my key, and the value it points to is near Xmas, a string. I could have it point to a number like we did with the days of the week when we had, you know, the number points to the string and then the, the name of the, the day point back to the number, right? In our example with maps, okay? So that should be pretty straightforward. And so we still have flexibility in type, just like with an array. So your value type can be anything, pretty much anything, right? Um, all elements are the same type still. So even when I say my key doesn't have to be an index, if I say my key is a string, then I can only use um, strings to, to index and sort of um, thing. And again, I cannot mix value type. So I can't say November the string is pointing to a string, and then September the string, my in key, is pointing to a number. Right? Because I would be mixing value type. Even though my key type would still always be string, my value type would be changing from string to integer, blah, blah. blah. Cannot do that. Cannot do that, right? Um, so the nice thing here with a map is we have flexibility in the index types that we can use. Now, when we come to a struct, we have in elements also, right? Can remember, is a struct is a sequence of named elements. So we still have elements. So here, I have a first element, a second element, and a third element. So this struct is three elements, a sequence of three elements. What is interesting here is that now my values are different. So my first element there is of type string. The second one is of type integer. The third one is of type boolean. And I can have many more elements, and some of them can still be string and some can be integer. There's no limitation that oh, in each struct, you can only have one type of any um, one element of each type. There can be multiple elements of each type. What it says though is that the field names must be unique, right? So non blank or field names are not anonymous should be unique. Of course, if they're unique, they're anonymous. So that's a different story. You can't name them anyway. So here we go. My field name here are name, age, and exempt. So those are what needs to be unique. It makes sense because name is going to point to my element or is the name that I, the field name I give for my element string when I want to access that string element. And age is the name that I give for the element that is an int and exempt. And I could have another um, field called SN for social security number that's also a string and that's totally fine okay and so you can see in the middle there there are the different values so suddenly now what we see is a map allow you to put elements of different types together but you give them a name and that's why I said it's an identifier because it's not a string it's not a string it's it's, it's a name and a name is an identifier just like you would give to a variable a constant or to a function all right, that's an identifier. And so it's a composite of multiple types. And what I like to say is that when it comes to um, the problem domain representation, it's, um, what I mean is that when you write programs, you write more and more complex program, you want to represent things from the problem domain. Uh, what is the problem you're trying to solve, right? There's the problem domain. And if you have things like people or persons or car or bus or a hotel or whatever, it's much better to be able to describe those entities in the real world or from your problem domain, artificial by having several fields or properties, right? And so uh, being able to define a struct um, allows you to do that. 
an advantage here is for the very first time now we're seeing that how we can come up with our own sort of data type because after we define this thing we can be able to use it over and over just like we use any other data type all right so let's go look at code i mean enough talking let's go look at the code so i'm gonna close that um, i can even say quit here and so i have an exercise for you uh, at the end of this um this section and feel free to try it it's not going to make any sense now but after um you learn about structs though then you'll be you should be able to do the exercise and then of course the solution is right there um i'm not going to go over uh the solution from the previous chapter because it's already provided all right um so here's my main for this chapter and let's say that i have a variable and i want it to be to represent a person, so I'm going to call it P. And what I can do is I can say struct and then open print um, curly braces like that. And I can say struct contains name, string, age, int. And then this time I'll change it up a little bit instead of exempt. Uh, well, let's let's keep it as a exempt. Uh, let's use source security number is string. Okay. And so now I'm saying that oh. P is a variable um, and it can hold this type, uh, this data type um, struct. Okay, now I'm getting an error here because um, I declare, um, you know, I've, have, I've used um, percent, uh, come on, percent V and P, and um, I have not, um, you know, I create a variable and I haven't used it, so let's do this. Okay, so now I'm on my command line in my directory, and um, so stubborn solution there. And so I can say go run main and uh, introduction to struts, and there is my um, the printout when I print that um, thing. Well, why am I getting um, this zero there? Well, if we go back here. The default value for an int is zero. The default value for a string is an empty string, empty string, so you don't see that, right? So it sort of makes sense. But if I do a printf with a percent, um, with a pong sign here, um, and if I do a backslash n here for a new line, I'll get rid of this percent sign here because I'll put a new line. Because I didn't have a new line, that's why. And then now I'll be able to see um, those fields in my struct. And this pong v sort of prints out the go representation of the variable so you could literally copy this and reuse it um, to recreate um, the variable right pretty much all right so let me i told my struct has um, name string age int and sn so um, string and then these are the value fields and field names right and their value the fields and their value so of course these is, this is the first field the second field third field and if first field's name or element here, its name is, um, no name. okay, and the second element, its name is H. As the description said, a struct is a name sequence, right, a sequence of named elements, right? All right, so let's go back here, and so once I have this, I can also create, of course, now that I have this variable, I can assign values to it. I can say p that name is equals to Smith. P that age is equals to thirty fifty three whatever my finger is. P that social security number is equals to one 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 zero one that one two three four. Okay, and of course let's print it again. And as you will expect. It should print, you know, what you think it should print because we assign values to those um, elements, right, of the struct. And um, I don't need to put this there anymore, so I'm going to take that out. And now we're going to have something like, once it's saved, something that looks like this. Of course, it's not as, you know, descriptive or informative as this one is, but we don't... We can tell that this is the name, this is the thing, and whatever. Uh, the thing to note with the struct is printing out the elements in the order you define them. Uh, unlike with like a map, you insert things and it's 
randomly out of a place. Okay. All right. Okay. So what's next? So now we know how to. Uh, be, this is called a defining a struct literally, right? And so you tend to do this, do things this way, when you want you 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 want to use a struct, but you're only going to use it one time in your code, and you're not going to use it repeatedly. So for example, if I say I want to have a slice of um, this struct now to represent people, right? So I'm going to put some individuals into uh, my friends, for example. So I say FMT. Um, Come on. Uh, so FMT, um, not FMT. Uh, var friends is a slice of this guy. Now, if I do that, now of course I can. I'm gonna go here, grab this, and I'm gonna call this friends. And the same thing um, goes right in terms of you know it's a slice. So notice um, I can create a slice of this new type that I've totally defined, this composite type, right? Um, and of course, length and so on all still works, but um, that's not exci as exciting. I mean, I could print this out and it's an empty slice, right? Like an array. So I can say friends is equals to append of the friends, uh, you know, friends, um, no. I need to create a uh, instance of or some values. Now, before I do that, one of the things I should probably have covered is this. Here, we create a variable p to struct, and we didn't assign any values. What if we wanted to assign value state while we create it? So, what I'm saying is we can say var i is an int. And then we can also say var x is equals to five, and we know that our, that is the exact same as if you said var x is an int, and then it gets this value. But Go doesn't need you to type this because it says, oh, I can figure out um, that this is an int from there, right? And the only time we need to do things is when we explicitly want something else, like we want, you know, um, float um, 32, and we have 5.3, for example, we know by default it was tried to be a float 64, right? So we did all that when we play with variables, with types and variables in chapter two. So what I'm saying then is that this first one is what we have up here, where we said P is of certain a certain type. We didn't give it a value. We let it take on the default value. And then we start assigning values to it afterward, which is the same as saying I is equals to 10, like that, right? But what if we want to combine the declaration and the assignment, like in this case, uh, how do we do it? We want to combine declaration and assignment in the case of a struct. And so how do we do it? So I'm going to say P1 equals, no, again, I can say P1 is this struct, right, equals to, and then do the value over here. The question is, how do we do the value? And so because I, I don't have to put the type because the value will specify the type, we do that. And just like how you do an array, remember when you have an array, like var a is equals to a slice, for example, of int. And then you start putting in the, um, the types, the values in here. So um, this is to say, this is the type and this is the set of values I want to create of that type. Well, and then we did the same thing with maps. When we went to map, you know, we said map um, int, for example, and int, sorry, int, and then we did the same thing, right? We said da da da, and then they all came in this parentheses after the, this close, open and close bracket after the type. So we're going to do the same thing here. This is the type, so don't get, don't get that confused. And then these are the values now. And now that I want to put in the values, I can stick in some value. I can say Joan uh, is 21, and uh, our social security number is 11 you know, dash 21 dash 5431. Okay. And remember, if you want to do, um, so this is, this represents, this is not array. So this represents, the 
how you t describe one struct. So this has to be enclosed in, you know, in this because the outer one is how you define the the values for this variable of this type. And um, well, let me keep it simple actually because we're not doing an array. So yeah. So this is how you define the value for one of those. Okay. So now let's print it out. And then, so this is P1. Okay. And once it's save up here, uh, why is it not going away? Oh, P1 not used. Oh, there it is. It went away finally. Okay. So I can rerun my thing. And this is P1 here. Joan. Okay. All right. So again, this is the type, just like before. And these are the values for this one type. And notice how, um, you know, I just put them in order. Now, if I want to mix up the order, um, I can say, for example, say a couple of things. If you're thinking that, oh, I want to make this more readable and do something like this, you can. That also works. As you can see with the save here, it still works. But look at this. If I put this on a new line when it's saved, it's not going, it's going to give me a little red line. And that's, it's going to say, oh, I expected a semicolon. I didn't expect a new line, but I expected like a comma or a semicolon. So you can stick that there. Yeah, it looks weird that there's an extra dangling comma, but guess what? It actually works. So just keep that in mind. If you want to separate things to make it more readable like this, you have a really big struct. Um, the last element, you can always stick a comma on it and it still um, works, or the last value, I should say, right? And it still works fine. Okay, so what about if we want to change the order um, of things, you know? Um, here, join is first because it matches up with the first type there. But what if I wanted to actually put, do something like this? Can I, like when we had um, the map, can I say age, colon, and then name, colon, and then social security number, colon, all right? And then if this can work this way, it gives us some flexibility in how we can order a specifier thing. And as you can see, it works. It sort of looks exactly like you would do for a map. You're saying, this is the field I want to assign a value to, and this is the value. So it looks just like how you sort of use a map. But notice this is the field name or an identifier, whereas with the map, it would be the value type of the key, right? Okay. All right. And again, like I said, you can see it didn't give me any error, so we should expect it to work the same way. And you guys all order, I assign them. It doesn't matter. It still print them in the order as it was defined. Okay. So going on to this now, uh, let's say I have some friends and uh, where's my friends variable? Uh, let me bring it down over here. Da, 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 da. Down. So I have some friend variable and let me carry you up over here closer to where you are used. Okay. All right, buddy. Let's do that. It's much better organization. So I have a friend um, struct and so a friend, a slice of friends. And so of course I can start a friend in appending new friends and just taken from what we did over here, I can just know that oh, I can create a object of this type and stick it in here, comma that. Okay. And that gives me an object. And so for example, um, I can say, 56, Mary, 212, 43, 7, 6, 1. Okay. And now if I print this, I have Mary in this array slash slice. Okay. The slice that I've created. And um, so I can keep appending and growing my slice that way. But what if I actually wanted like initialize the slice here? So I want to say friends is equal to this slice that I'm going to initialize. Well, remember when you, that's the, this is the type. And then in order to assign some values, you do that. And so then you would put the value in, you'd say value zero comma value 
1 comma value 2 right so what is a value we already said that a value you know looks like something like this well it already knows what the type is so we don't have to reassign the value say the value again we just have to because remember the value comes after the type so we just have to really do this 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 and then this okay and then we could put a comma and then enter there if we want to make our things look nice okay and so now I'm going to um, let's do ba -ba -ba. let's um, remove this this one where we've been appending you know what um, we should keep all the stuff we've done so far so that you have it all in one place so I'm gonna copy this then I'm gonna undo 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 uh, keep on doing until I get back to this okay so I just have friend as a slice and a, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nail slice right doesn't have anything in it I append a friend onto it now I'm gonna go and create var people or group for example uh, equals to a slice of struct you know whatever um, but let me paste below this this guy and um, it's not it's not friends but it's this so all right so people is equal to a slice of struct of this with these values okay and then of course we're gonna print it out so command C command V and then I want to print out people okay and that should save and should tell me that there's no error that goes away and of course let me put some different folks in here and so um, let me do this and let's see if it's gonna save and line it up nicely for me and it does and so instead of Mary, I'm going to do somebody who's 18, somebody who's 29, somebody who's 40, and I'll put Smith, I'll put Greg, um, then let's put uh, Sam, oh, we got our guys in there, um, let's do Jane, and we'll do 0113, and then... 35 and then 0 1 uh, whatever I'm just hitting keys on my keyboard okay um, and then that's fine and then okay looks fine looks fine all right and so now notice how I was able to create a slice with some values and then say assign that to people and then of course I can um, you know just print out people and, and I run this I have people being printed out here as you can see curly braces around the first element of that slice second element of that slice but then within each uh, element which we know is a struct we have these other elements within these name element which is this is name this is age this is social security number and if you actually want to see it more explicitly you can put the pong percent, you know, pong v, but I'm not gonna do that. It's gonna mess up my screen. It's gonna be very long. Okay, so in just before we wrap up, let me show. This is tedious. Having to keep typing out the type all the time. So this is called a literal. Um, when you define a uh, variable of this struct, you can do it literally like this, or you can kind of give it a name. And the way you do that is you say this. You say type. So notice there's a new keyword we've introduced. And let's say, for example, I want this. Um, this seems to represent a person, doesn't it? So let's give the name person. And then I'm going to say a person is a struct. And we haven't really talked about using the type keyword. And we're going to do that in another chapter. But this is just to show you how you can use it here. Because here's where it makes most sense to use type. We haven't really found a situation yet where it makes sense. So now I have this new type called person. So I have type person just like we have function some name of the function and the body of the function here we have type is a person um, person is a type and they have all these fields and so what that gives us now is if we 
kind of cut this out. So I'm going to cut this out, go all the way up here. And you could put it inside main, but I'm going to put it outside main here to just kind of logically show it out what kind of flies all over. But it doesn't really matter. Go doesn't care if you put it inside or outside of main. I'll put it out there. And the reason why you see this wiggly line is complaining about exporting type, as we know, in Go, a capital letter before variables and so on means that it's being exported from that package. So it says, hey, if you export something, you should get in the practice of always giving us a nice comment. And Go's suggestion is that the first word should be the thing that's being exported, whether it's a function, a variable, whatever. So I'm say person is, uh, person defines a fields for an individual. Okay, make sense? Uh, very simple. That's what it is. And once it's saved, you'll see that in the way. Okay, and that's just for documentation. Um, not only internally for you, but when Gojack doc generates documentation. Now, since I have type called person, because like I have a type called string or type called int, since person is now a type, well, um, we can just reuse that, right? We can do this. And so that's the advantage of using a type here to specify our struct, for example, because now it saved me from typing this over and over and I could go everywhere I have this, I could just literally put person. And notice what I told you again, this last set of parentheses is how you specify the values for that thing. And so here I can do the same thing here. And notice how my program is just like magically shrinking in size and there we go do that and it's the exact same thing right you know appending and here and there you go i've replaced it all thing so notice oh um just defining this once i can reuse it multiple places and i don't have to keep redefining it redefining it and possibly if i ever want to add a new type um element or value you know, a new element to or field to this struct, I could just come up to this one place and say like data barge is equal. So for now, we're going to do string. And if I did that, um, string, it takes effect all over. Um, I do not have to worry that, oh, I have to go to all those individual places and make sure that I put it in or anything like that, right? The order wouldn't matter, but it's better to just change it one place then have it scattered, that same declaration be scattered all over and um, you can't really take advantage of reusing it. Well, you can reuse your, your reason it, but it's, it's error prone. Again, sorry about the noise, where I'm at, it's raining. So all the noise you're hearing now is the rain coming down very heavy and it's beating on the zinc and so on. So I'm in the carbine actually. So anyway, um, I hope I'm gonna cut this video off, off here. Please try the exercise which is so since person defines fields for an interval such as name and da 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 what I want you to do is to add some other fields for the person's address okay person's address bam and then um, create a slice with three individuals in it at least you can do more and then here's this thing is going to print out their name and their city so I already did this part you just have to do this part of creating that slice of tree individual and of course adding appropriate fields here for their address. And uh, of course the solution is right there. So if you get stuck or something or you want to compare after you do it or if you don't want to do it but you just want to see the solution, do check it out. Thanks again for your time. Really appreciate the support and the subscription. Please uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and please spread the word. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.